Welcome to Black History Heroes podcast. Today's topic takes us to New York City's Central Park. When you visit Central Park, the landscape at the intersection of 82nd and 89th Streets and 7th and 8th Avenue looks like the rest of the park. From 1825 to 1857, however, this location was the settlement of a small village of free Africans. Before Harlem was in vogue, there was Seneca Village, then the largest community of African-American property owners in antebellum New York. Too many, including residents of New York, this piece of historical information may come as a shock, representing one of the many omissions of Africans from the public history of the United States. There are many theories about how Seneca Village derived its name. One theory is that it may be derived from Senegal, a country in West Africa, where a number of the residents are said to have come from. This may not be a far-fetched theory because it is notable that the residents of Seneca Village self-identified as Africans, which was clearly represented by the institutions they built and named. The settlement of free Africans began when John and Elizabeth Whitehead sold parcels of their farm to Andrew Williams and Epiphany Davis in September of 1825. Williams and Davis became the first two black residents at the site off the Hudson River. Notably, on July 4th, 1827, slavery was ended in the state of New York. While there were a number of caveats in the law that resulted in not all enslaved people being freed at once, this must have attracted many of the newly freed Africans to Seneca Village. Additionally, at this time, the open rural land in uptown Seneca Village would have offered relief from the cram living conditions in downtown Manhattan. Within weeks of Epiphany Davis's individual purchase of land, an additional purchase of eight lots was made by Davis as trustee of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. By 1829, nine homes were built. By 1832, the Whiteheads sold more than two additional dozens of lots to African-American residents. The Irish population, along with some German immigrants, increased the diversity of Seneca Village between 1845 and 1852, when the Great Famine in Ireland, commonly referred to as the Potato Famine, began in 1845. Many Irish immigrants began to arrive in New York. Facing discrimination, many of the Irish immigrants began to migrate to Seneca Village living peacefully along with the original African-American settlers. By 1848, discussion of a centralized park in Manhattan arose in New York City. A talk about public parks and gardens was published by Andrew Downings, a landscape designer and a horticulturalist that same year. Downings promoted Manhattan as an optimal location for a public park, most of the city's population lived below 14th Street. At the time, the land above 59th Street was more rural in character, a contrast to the crowded tenants, tenements and shanties in the downtown neighborhoods. As the campaign for Central Park developed, it is also notable that the news media began to describe Seneca Village as, quote, a shanty town a shanty town of squatters, prime for redevelopment. This was alleged even though by 1850, Black Seneca Village residents were 39 times more likely to own property as other Blacks in New York City. Despite these public discussions, in 1853, the AME Church began building in Seneca Village, joining two other churches in the community, Angels Church and the African Union Methodist Church. The AME Church's construction started at a time when the political climate in New York City robustly pointed to Seneca Village as a likely site for Central Park. In fact, 
the same year the AME Church began building the New York State Legislature, approved building Central Park on attractive land that included Seneca Village. The spot they chose was 700 acres from 59th to 106th Streets between 5th and 8th Avenues. By 1855, the New York State Census indicates there were approximately 264 residents and 70 houses in Seneca Village. 30% of European descent, 70% of African descent. Of those residents, 10 were qualified to vote in New York, which was granted only to males who had three years residency in the state, had paid their taxes, and had a $250 freehold estate. James Henson, an African-American barrel maker in Seneca Village, was included in the population of eligible voters because in 1837, he purchased his property for $325 and it was valued at $550 by 1855. Seneca Village, in fact, had the highest concentration of land owning African-Americans in New York. 50% of its residents owned their land, which included notable slavery abolitionists, Samuel Hartenberg, Albro Lyons, Levin Smith. After heated legal fights by Seneca Village residents, as well as other neighboring residents that would be displaced by Central Park, by the summer of 1857, the New York City government had acquired all of the private property of Seneca Village through eminent domain, which is the taking of private property for public use with compensation to the landowners. New York City Mayor Fernando Wood sent residents of Seneca Village a final notice. By October 1st, 1857, the last residents of Seneca Village would be removed, some forcibly by the police. The newly constructed AME Church in Seneca Village disappeared after the village was destroyed. But a remnant of the church's foundation is represented by a stone outcropping at the entrance of Central Park at 85th Street. Today, a historical marker of the Seneca Village site is located in Central Park. Thank you for joining us. That is our podcast for today. For more Black history, visit us at www.blackhistoryheroes.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at History Heroes. A special thanks to the sponsors of today's podcast, superdealsbooks.com. Thank you.